G'day guys, how are we doing? Welcome to the Weekly Roundup. It is Friday, May the 3rd, 2024, and as always, it is an understatement to say that it has been a massive week in boxing, both here and Australia, and especially overseas, and uh, we'll get to all the latest news from uh, all over the place, and uh, has been... Uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's a big build-up this week. Obviously, there's some big fights coming up, but also some of the stuff happening outside the ring has been uh, pretty comical as well, and I'm sure you know what I'm getting at, but we'll get to all that as we go. The big Australian news this week is that Vasily Lomachenko has touched down in Perth for the vacant IBF world title fight, lightweight title fight against George Cambosis Jr. Uh, it'll take place at the RAC Arena in Perth on May the 12th, Mother's Day. Uh, Lomachenko 17-3 and up against George Cambosis Jr. 21-2. and uh, neither one of these guys have been overly active in the last few years. It's interesting that Lomachenko has only had 20 fights in 11 years as a pro. So uh, not many, only a couple per year on average. George Cambosis, 21-2. and two. Uh, He hasn't fought since July last year when he won that uh, controversial decision over Maxi Hughes in Oklahoma. And uh, Lomachenko hasn't fought since last May when he dropped uh, a controversial decision to uh, world uh, former world lightweight champion uh, Devin Hay. So, look, it's going to be a great event. Really looking forward to it. I'll be over there in Perth. It's a stack card. On the undercard of that fight will be Andrew Maloney uh, challenging uh, Pedro Guevara for the WBC Interim Super Flyweight World Title. Uh, Andrew, 26-3. and three. Uh, Guevara, who uh, is 41-4-1. and one. Now, Guevara is a late replacement um, for Quadras, Carlos Quadras, who had to pull out injured. But either way, this is a very, very tough fight for Andrew. Uh, and Guevara did actually fight uh, Quadras for the vacant WBC Interim title uh, a few months back and lost that one. But he gave him a good fight, so I'm sure it will be a massive event. On the undercard as well, Shanika Johnson, 15-2. and two. She'll fight Nina Hughes, who's only 6-0. and oh. That'll be for the WBA Super Bantamweight title. And a couple of good undercard fights as well. Joseph Goodall, 10-2-1. He'll fight uh, Fagu Django Apalu, who's 16-4-2 over 10 rounds at heavyweight. And uh, everyone's, well, I'll say not everyone's, but my favorite Australian heavyweight, Lucas Brown, 31 and 5. He'll take on Himi uh, Ohio. I think that's how you pronounce it, Ohio. I think that's uh, how it is. Uh, anyway, he's 21 and 1. That'll be over eight rounds. So it's going to be a great card. It's on main event. So if you haven't got that, make sure you buy it. I'm pretty sure it's 60 or 70 bucks, whatever it is, but money well spent for what should be a great card. And the fact that we've got a great. Uh, champion in Vasily Lomachenko on Australian uh, shores for the first time uh, up against the former undisputed lightweight champion George Cambosis. It's uh, probably the biggest event. I, I know the Devin Haney card was uh, was massive, but I would probably liken this with Lomachenko coming to Australia as Manny Pacquiao coming to Australia back in 2017 when he fought uh, Jeff Horn. So uh, looking forward to uh, getting over there again. And uh, not just the main event, but a stacked undercard. So uh, all the best to everyone competing. And if you're in the Perth area, then make sure you get to the fight. Although I think it is sold out. But if it is and you can't get there, then uh, main event is the way to go. Now, another massive event that's taking place on Monday featuring uh, Australia's only world champion at the moment, uh, Jason Maloney. He's going to be taking on Yoshiki Take in defense of his WBO uh, World Bantamweight title. That's at the Tokyo Dome. Uh, Jason is 27-2. and two. Take, now he's only 8-0, and oh, but he has a very extensive record. Uh, overseas, uh, oh, sorry, not overseas, in the uh, combat sports, so he's kickboxing, um, whatever else he's been up to, but a very extensive uh, career, and uh, he's obviously just entered into the boxing uh, arena, but 8 no, but he's very well renowned in Japan, and apparently this is going to be the biggest card ever in Japan, because it also features three other world title fights, of course, headlined by arguably... Uh, the best fighter in the world, pound for pound. That's Naoya Inoue. He's 26-0. He's going to be defending his undisputed 122-pound titles against Lewis Neary, who's 35-1. and one. So that's the main event on the, uh, the other uh, uh, undercard fights. His brother, Takuma 
in a way, who's 19 and 1. He's going to fight Sho Ishida, who's 34 and 3 for the WBA Bantamweight title. And in the fourth world title fight on the card, Siego Yuri Akui, I think that's how you pronounce it, 19, 2 and 1. He's going to fight Taku uh, Kawahara, who's 13 and 1 for the WBA Flyweight title. So what an event to be on for Jason Mayhem Maloney. Uh, he has sort of earned the nickname of the Road Warrior. His last, uh, th- well, this will be his third fight straight overseas in world title fights. Uh, so he was in uh, Stockton, California last year. Then he went to Canada at the start of this year. And now, of course, in Japan. So, look, it's going to be a tough fight for Jason uh, the Japanese fighters uh, are just getting better and better um, in recent years. And to fight uh, a Japanese fighter uh, for the world title in Tokyo, it's a big ask. But if anyone can do it, Jason Maloney can. Uh, and as I said, there's no probably coincidence why he's nicknamed the Road Warrior now. And I've got no doubt that he will bring uh, the belt back home to Australia. Uh, another bit of news in the Australian scene is that uh, Ace Boxing next week, uh, May 8th in Logan, Queensland, will go for their third fight on the 7 Plus uh, series. Uh, that's headlined by Benjamin Kelleher. He's 16, 6, and 2. He'll fight Joshua Francis, who's 14, 2, and 1 in the main event. That card also features Alex Leopold Jr. So you've got the 7 Plus app. Uh, next Wednesday night, May 8th, from Logan, Queensland. And just another one on Ace Boxing. The head of Ace Boxing, Angelo DiCarlo, uh, has been around for 24 years promoting. has been one of the stalwarts of uh, Australian boxing pr- uh, promotions over the years. He's t- uh, called it a day. Reluctantly, uh, he's put on some great shows over the years. And as I said, he's been at the head as one of the leading promoters in Australia for quite some time. And uh, for health um, reasons, he's decided to hand over the reins of Ace Boxing to his business partners. And uh, this may be, we'll see, may be the last um, show that Ace Boxing do on 7 Plus uh, before it gets handed over to someone else. I can't confirm that. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. But you would think that if uh, Andrew DiCarlo is not head of uh, Ace Boxing, they might. Uh, give the rights to someone else. But either way, whatever happens, Ace Boxing has been great for boxing over the years. Uh, I hope his business partners continue on with what uh, Angelo has started. And uh, it's very, very uh, hard to stay in the business for so for so long, especially 24 years. And we wish uh, Andrew DiCarlo all the very best in uh, his endeavours and uh, or outside boxing. And I'm sure he'll get back to just sitting ringside and uh, and enjoying the shows rather than the stress of actually putting them on. So again, best of luck to Angelo. Now into the world scene. Now there's only been one thing people have been talking about this week. Now you'd probably say it's Canelo Alvarez versus Jaime Munguia, but it's probably more so Oscar. Uh, De La Hoya versus uh, Canelo Alvarez because the last press conference, uh, th- and this has been simmering for a little for uh, a little while. Oscar De La Hoya uh, has uh, tipped it over the the, the simmering uh, bowl of uh, boiling hot water on the stove rather than let it simmer. He's got it and tipped all over the place, and Canelo Alvarez has bitten. So if you didn't see it, I'm sure you have. Uh, Oscar pretty much said that he, uh, along with Golden Boy Promotions, of course, of uh, which he is the, the CEO and the head, uh, is the reason, of course, that Canelo Alvarez is where he's at. Of course, they did have a bit of a messy split a few years back. And uh, at the press conference, Oscar De La Hoya uh, pretty much told Canelo to pull his head in and, and uh, respect Oscar and his company for what they've done for him. Canelo took the bait, hook, line and sinker. And if it wasn't for a few uh, people getting in the middle, we could have actually seen what would be one of the best dream fights of all time. Oscar De La Hoya versus Canelo Alvarez, albeit a few years uh, down the track. But uh, did take away a lot from what was uh, the final press conference. And look... Regardless of whose side you're on and who you think's right or wrong, and I'm sure there's a little bit of both on both sides, the fact that that final press conference, the attention that this has got, it just went absolutely viral on social media and on YouTube and everything else. I've got no doubt this will really add to the buys and the interest in this event. And uh, who knows, we might even get Canelo Alvarez, if he does beat Jaime Munguia, challenge Oscar De La Hoya afterwards. But whether it be inside the ring or outside, but we'll see. So it is for the undisputed 168-pound titles. Canelo Alvarez, 60 wins, two losses, two draws. Uh, Munguia is 43-0, and so a very formidable opponent. Now, this will take place at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. It is on main event for, I think, 69.95. So get on there and uh, buy that. 
that should be a great, great fight. On the undercard, Mario Barrios, uh, 28 and 2. He'll fight Fabian Andres Medina, who's 22 and 2. That's for the WBC interim 154-pound title. Also on that card, Brandon Figueroa, 24-1 and 1. He'll fight Jesse Magdaleno, former champion, 29 and 2 for the WBC interim 126-pound title. And to round out the card, uh, Emmy uh, Amantis Sanionis. I can never get that right. 14 and 0. He'll fight Gabriel uh, Mastre, who's 6 0 and 1 for the WBC 147 pound title. So, look, I think it's well worth it. Uh, seems to be a lot more of the trend these days of having multiple world title fights on these cards to uh, these cards to to give a lot more value for money and to have four world title fights uh, on Monday as I said with the Japanese card four world title fights have of course got all the the Saudi cards coming up as well so let's hope that the uh, promoters are getting the message and they're going to have stack cards from top to bottom going forward just like the UFC have done and just in my humble opinion I think they need to do that to be able to compete with the UFC who always give great value for money with their cards. Another big uh, uh, part of the news this week that happened outside of the ring is Ryan Garcia. Of course, a couple of weeks back, had his best win of his career with the uh, 12-round decision win over Devin Haney. Well, he's uh, apparently tested positive to the band PED Osterine. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, a lot of details still coming to light, so I won't shed too much light on it at the moment. Still very, uh, uh, very raw. It's only just happened in the last sort of 24 hours, so we'll wait to see what happens with all the uh, the bodies and commissions and everything that's involved before I comment further. But just to break it down a little bit, uh, he did have four tests prior to his fight with Devin Haney, uh, February 26th, March 8th, March 15th, April 3rd, and tested negative to all those or in those tests. He had another two tests the day before the fight on April 19th and on the day of the fight being April the 20th, and that's apparently where he tested positive. Now, I, I must admit, it just seems a little bit unusual that you would test negative in your training camp, which is obviously where you're trying to get fit and build up and everything else and where you would need the PEDs, tested negative. It was only the day before the fight and on fight day that he actually tested positive. So I'm struggling to sort of get my head around it at the moment. However, having said that, um, again, as I said, it, it just will wait till it all comes to hand and then we'll be able to make uh, some more um, comments, I suppose, and, uh, and comment a little bit further on, on how we see it. But it does seem a little bit odd that uh, in the lead up in his training camp was negative and on the day of the fight he tests positive but we are awaiting the B sample and that will probably tell all Devin Haney of course has jumped straight on this and his supporters of course he's actually seeking to have it uh, made a no contest still way too early so far but if the B sample does come back and it is positive as well um I have a feeling we might see a no contest uh, which I would hate to see look there are conspiracy theorists out there as well there's a little bit of coincidence that last week he was endorsing Donald Trump. Did not go down well with a lot of people out there. Uh, of course, a lot of people didn't like the fact he beat one of the favorite sons in Devin Haney. He won $12 million in a side bet. Uh, the, his uh, training camp was very unorthodox with drinking and, and everything else. So, look, I'm not going to buy into all that at the moment till we know more. But the facts of the matter are... Uh, he has tested allegedly pos um, positive for the A sample. So when we get the B sample back, uh, as I said, we will know more. So we'll keep an eye on that. Some more world news. Deontay Wilder. And this is the one that really made me raise my eyebrows. He's scheduled to fight Zilei Zhang on June 1st on that big five versus five undercard of the Better Beav and Bivol fight in Saudi Arabia. Now he's been penciled in to fight Jared uh, Anderson. Two months later, so eight weeks down the track on the big August 3rd fight in uh, in Los Angeles. Of course, it's headlined by Crawford, Madramov, and Zoo versus Ortiz, and Cruz uh, Valens Valenzuela as well. So this is a guy that fights once every 12, 18 months, sometimes even two years. And to think at his age, uh, I think he's late 30s or 36, 37, whatever it might be at the moment, to think that he's going to back up eight weeks later from a fight, or a very tough fight with Zile Zhang, I'm still to be convinced. But... As I said, it has been announced that he will fight Jared Anderson on August the 3rd. So, again, we'll keep an eye on that one. He does want the uh, the trilogy, or not the trilogy, the fourth fight with uh, Tyson Fury or, worst case, a fight with Anthony Joshua. So maybe this is his way of, uh, of earning that fight. 
Again, let's uh, keep an eye on that one. Now, I wasn't going to comment on this, but it is big news. Jake Paul and Mike Tyson is now an official fight. Now, it was muted that it would be a exhibition fight with head guards and 16-ounce gloves or maybe even 8-ounce gloves, 18-ounce gloves, sorry, all along those sort of lines. No knockdowns, no decision, all that sort of thing. But it is now an official fight. Uh, it's it's uh, going to be uh, wearing, I think, 14-ounce gloves, eight two-minute rounds. Now, of course, it's in Dallas, Texas on July 20th. The big question I have is, if it is going to be an official fight, then why aren't they fighting under official rules? Now, if you're not quite aware, there are stipulations in professional fights of minimal requirements. Now, heavyweights can wear 10, sometimes 12-ounce gloves. So these guys are wearing 14-ounce gloves. So already they've gone past what is the is the uh, the norm with commissions how they sanction these fights and also two minute rounds for the now this is not unusual in effect when you think that a lot of um, uh, women fight two minute rounds so but I haven't seen a case where males have fought two minute rounds now I'm not sure whether there's a precedent so I can't comment all I'm saying is that normally male sanctioned official boxing fights are three minute rounds that can be Four rounds, five rounds, six rounds, seven rounds, whatever it might be, but they're always three-minute rounds. So that was really an unusual um, uh, rule that was that was added to this. So, um, but anyway, look, as I said, I wasn't going to give it too much time, but uh, now it is an official fight. I suppose we have to mention it. So that's Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, an official fight. The other thing is, uh, the question I have is, is how in the hell has Mike Tyson at fifty or he's fifty-seven now? He will be 58 by the time they get in the ring. How does the commission or sanctioning bodies or governing bodies, whatever it might be, state to state, country to country, sanction a 58-year-old man, no matter what the history is, um, to get in and fight? Mike Tyson has had health issues. We've seen him not that long ago walking around with a cane. He's had really bad sciatica problems. Um, we know that he likes to engage in some recreational activity, if you know what I'm getting at. So it's an interesting one for me. Um, I, would, look, I wouldn't have had a problem at all with this being an exhibition fight, but the fact it's a, it's a real fight now, the only good thing that might come out of it is Mike Tyson is now allowed to actually cut loose and maybe knock Jake Paul out. I don't know, but uh, it did raise my eyebrows at least with some of the things that are going on. But as always, money talks, and the fact that they can now bet on this fight, the punters out there, might have something to do with um, you know, the interest in this fight and why it's now an official fight, so everyone can bet probably hundreds of millions of dollars on this fight. Look, I've got no doubt it'll be entertaining. My only, my only fear is that Mike Tyson comes out swinging in the first round, can't get the job done, and then uh, falls in a screaming heap after that, and Jake Paul... Um, beats one of the greatest fighters of all time and just makes, again, more of a mockery of our sport. But anyway, that's uh, July 20th. What's that, about two and a half months away? Uh, so we'll keep on an eye on the proceedings of that one. Uh, another fight that's been announced, Jaron Boots Ennis. He'll fight uh, Cody Crowley for the IBF welterweight title at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. Uh, I think that was in, uh, that was June 19th, I think it was. I didn't have, actually didn't make note of that, so apologies for that. I think it's June 19th. Uh, that's his first fight for the IBF welterweight uh, title, first defense. He's 31-0, and 0 and Crowley is 22-0. and 0. Should be an okay fight. I would have thought maybe they might have looked at someone maybe a little bit higher up the tree than Crowley. I know he's 22 and over. He's 31 years old. Hasn't really had any any big signature wins. So I just would have thought Ennis would have maybe tried to have a bit more of a, a bigger name for his first defense. But it is what it is. I'm sure he'll get some big fights down the track. So guys, that's about it for this, this week's episode. Uh, I'll have all the uh, results next week. Some uh, big fights coming up in the next sort of few days and, and weeks. So plenty to go over. But have a good weekend. Enjoy the fights and we'll catch you next time.